This is Tim Willis, and I'm knowing with coffee OBS and a built-in laptop microphone. This is another video from Nomad Funnel Hacker. So we're working with Sistine IO in this video, and I've done a couple of orientation videos before, and this is going to be another one. And even though I'm a certified ClickFunnels phone builder, the reason I am doing videos with Sistine.io, because if you wanted to have ClickFunnels or even go high level, at the lowest level, using the entry package you'd still be paying $97 a month and that can be a barrier to people that might just want to learn how to build out web pages build sales funnels and do things in a web page editor or sales funnel type software system.io is not free but it does have a free level so people can get started it has some fairly reasonable limitations last time i checked you can build up to three funnels and have up to 15 pages and up to 2,000 email contacts. So that's actually quite generous. And I don't know of any reasonably powered funnel builder that's offering that right now. Of course, there's WordPress. WordPress is a totally different kind of thing. It's not really made for building sales funnels. But that being said, let's get started here. So I have already created the funnel. And I've called it test one. I've already created a sales page. And called it test page one. And the next thing we have to do is select a template. Now, they don't offer, as far as I see here, a blank page to start off with. So you have to select a template. And you've got plenty to choose from. They've got pages and pages of them. But we just want something simple. So we're going to choose this one that says Boost Your English. We can preview the template and see what it's going to look like full size. Or we can just click on Select and it'll load it up in the editor. And this video is going to be about just an orientation on the system.io editor. And so once we've selected our template, we can view the funnel step, which is the preview we just saw, basically. We could change the template. That's going to take us back. It's going to ask us if we want to change the template. And it'll take us back to where we just were. Or we can edit the page, which is the thing we want to do. Now, as well, you have different things you can look at here, none of which we are doing it. You have your sales, your stats, your automation rules. But we want to be on configuration as well. You have the name of your page and also the URL path. And I am using the built in domain and system.io. Now, if you actually are going to put something on the internet, try to sell something, you probably want to get a custom domain. But if you just want to play around and work with the editor, 16.io is going to give you a built-in domain that you can use and get on the internet and test things. With that, let's go ahead and click on edit page. And you got a very clean page. So all your actions mainly going to be happening on the right side. That's where you're going to see your page you're building out. Uh, you have a save pages button. You have an exit button. You have a preview button here. All your heavy lifting is going to be done here on the left side, as opposed to the right side, as it would be in ClickFunnels. So it takes a little bit of adjustment. That's not that big a thing. You also have a control for your pop up. You'd have to add a pop up. And the settings, which are the settings for your entire cabinets, as opposed to a section or row or element. Speaking of which, the way the structure is laid out is we have sections. Those are the items with the green toolbar. We have rows. Those are the items with the blue toolbar. And the rows can have multiple columns. And then we have elements, which are your things like your headlines, your images and things like that. And those have an orange toolbar. And by the way, this color coding system for the section, rows, and elements also is the same as ClickFunnels or Go High Level. So if you're coming from one of those programs, you shouldn't be totally lost. Or if you're going to system IO to one of the programs, there should be at least some base familiarity. Now, the difference between your programs is where they put the bells and whistles. And in this case, we have our bells and whistles on the left-hand side. 
So we want to select our section here and we see that it will have all our controls for our section. If we go to instead our row here, it's going to change to the settings for the row. And the same thing if we go to our element here, it's going to go to control for the individual element, which will change on what kind of element it is. This being a text headline. If we were to choose this image instead, we're going to have a different set of options. And that's basically how the editor works. In the short view, of course, there's a lot more to it, which we'll get to in time. But I'm just trying to keep this simple. So we're going to actually look at our settings, which are going to affect everything. We had the default typography, so we can set our fonts. Styles was using Google Fonts. And that is the default. It looks like they have some others available. I would stick with Google Fonts for right now, not get too fancy. I think that's what we're going to use on everything. Uh, you can set your font size, you can set your line height. You can set the color of your links and your text. And so these are going to be basically the default colors. You can always change those on the individual element, but this just sets sort of your default color that you use. And if, for example, you have a brand kit or you're working with a client that has a brand kit, you may want to go ahead and set that color there. Otherwise, it's kind of a never mind kind of issue. We can also align things. So we're aligned to the center right now. And then you can see we have default typography here. We have heading typography here. And it's a little different. Um, we can choose our language. Background we're going to get to a little bit. We have some SEO settings we can put in there. We have tracking for Facebook. And we have a choice where we want to turn on or off the affiliate badge for system IO if we're an affiliate. Now, this is where we're going to look at the background again. Now the background, we can set a background color or we can set it to nothing at all. If we click that little null symbol, if we click the little cross hatch, you'll bring up the color palette. And we can use the color palette. We can put in a hex code or IGB or numbers for RGBA. Or we can select a default color. Let's go ahead and select a default color. Red, and you see everything is red there. Now, here's the trick. We are actually in settings right now. So this is the cabinets which underlays everything else. You have to think of this as a painting. Our cabinets is our white cabinets that we put the paint on. The section rows and elements are the paint. So if we go out of our settings and go to our section, Right now, the reason we're seeing the red is because our background color on our section is not turned on. Or the opacity is 100% where none of the color that's set at the section level is coming through. it. And this comes into an issue that I don't like about System.io is the way they labeled our background colors. So we're going to go to the inner background color first. And you see you have a color palette. You can select your hue. Then you have this button below that that's just got the gray hash out area. That is your opacity control. And as we move it, it's going to change our color because right now we are set to the color white. And so that is going to be the issue. Or that's going to be how that works. Now, if you notice, we still have a red border kind of going around our background area that's coming from the cabinets. 
And the reason for that is, and this is the thing I don't like about the way they labeled it, is the background color is actually that border color. And you see, it's also got barely any opacity on it. I want to change the color to black. And then you see here, as soon as we did that, it went to zero opacity. But if we move our slider, not being cooperative, it will start turning black as we go to that 100% opacity. But as it is, you can see, even if the inner background is set to white, and then the background color is set to black, but it's just that border area. So to me, I think they could have worded that better. But, you know, it's their sandbox and we just play in it. So now, what we can also do is go to our colors and make the opacity of both right now 100%. That way, there's going to be no color coming through, and we're only going to have the red color coming from our cabinets. And as I said before, the cabinets is going to be the background color. It's everything. So if something has 100% opacity, that's whatever is on that background is going to come through. Now, normally, most cases, if you do set it anything other than white, it's going to be, most of the time, if you set it to a color, it's generally going to be either like a white or a black for the most part. Let's go to our settings there. It could be a different color. We also have the capability of using images. But remember, any time that you don't have 100% opacity on your section, you're not going to see that. So for just this video, I'm going to show how to put an image on the background cabinets. And then I will show you how to do it for other sections in different videos. And the reason for that is there is what's called a whiteout effect. And we're only going to be able to do that if we have an image on our background and we use the opacity control on our section. So let's go ahead and kill off our background color. And then we're going to come here where it says background image. And we can either upload an image from our computer or we can use images we've already uploaded. I've already got a couple uploaded, so I'm just going to use one of them. We use this one of the mountains. Just select it, choose insert, and now you can see that is our background. But it's only the background on this one section. All our other sections have whatever backgrounds or settings or colors they have. Now what's happening here, if you notice, is all our sections are showing that image. And the reason for that is that our opacity is at 100%. So if we come here and choose our section, and then make it Let's make it black. And then our background color, make it black. You can see that the background image is no longer coming through on that section, but it is coming through on our top section. And so be aware that that will happen if you don't have a background color set on other sections and you can see here's a different section here how the background image is coming through there now the other thing we can do is we can have a section like this 
set to the background. And we can choose our section and come here to our background colors for the section and do what's called a whiteout or a blackout effect. So we're set to white right now. We're going to move our opacity control to about 50%. It doesn't give us an exact number there, but we'll put it in the middle. And you see how it whited out that middle area. And if we do the same thing here, get it about in the middle and then set it to white. Now we've got a faded out effect on the background because we've got about 50% of that white coming through. And this is something you'll often see. Now, in System I.O., this is the only way you're going to be able to do it. There's not a way of doing a foreground color, which is what this functionally is. in System.io. And even you see kind of it's a little squirrely there on that. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work real great. So you may be stuck with trying to adjust things out with that board, that background image. They don't seem to work at the same level. That's going to be another issue. But if you put all your elements in here correctly, you can still make that work. And you still get that whiteout effect. And even for his click funnels, until they came out with ClickFunnels 2.0, they didn't have a foreground color ability there either, except using CSS code, which is another way you could do this. But in these videos, we are not going to be using CSS code. We're going to be sticking just with the tools we have in the program itself. Now, the other thing you could do is the opposite of that. It's called a blackout effect. We'll just set everything to black. And it just is still acting as a foreground color. It just is acting differently. So we might want to lighten that up some. But it will bring a little darkness in there if you want it kind of dark. In this case, you probably want to make your text white or something like that. But that is how you can get that foreground effect in System.io. And as I said, this is something that most editors, even for sales funnels, don't have. And often if it is done, it's done with CSS code, which you'd have to learn CSS. Other than that, I would just go ahead in this case. We're going to make our opacity 100% on both. If we're looking at our background image. And then we are actually going to go to our settings and get rid of that as well. Which we do just by clicking the X. That returns us to a white background. Which will be a perfect place to start on our next video. So what I'm going to do is save my changes. And that saves all the changes that we made. And then when we return in the next video, this is what we'll see. So that's going to be it for the orientation on the system.io editor and also the background images and also how to create a foreground effect on background image. That covers quite a bit of territory for one video. My name is Tim Willis. I'm a certified click on phone builder and I make tutorial and illustration videos on sales funnel building, web page design, marketing research, and all the tools we use to do those things, which in this case is system.io. That is going to be the video for now. I will talk to you later.